city of stars. Welcome. Oh. Namaste. Welcome. Slow deep flow. Back to back two hour option. Slow flow and the deep floor. All right, so let's start to gyrate the spine on the stable pelvic base. Couple of reminders if you have any technical concerns or challenges. You have the ability to unmute yourself. You can ask me questions about technical things or technique or anything really. I'm sure you can see and hear me. All right, you're comfortable and we're engaged. I'm basing my sit bones. We are basing our pelvis on the floor as we gyrate our spine, flexing back, lateral flexing side, inhale extending forward, exhale flexing back. Excuse me, I have to admit people as they come in. Welcome Paris. All right, Paris most welcome. We're gyrating the spine. Exhale, flex back. Lateral flex into inhale extension. Full Shakti. X flex to the side, back, side inhale. Full extension. Full flexion. In, back. And reverse. In, back. Might help to hold the knees to pull in the high heart, and then hold on as you dip back into the deep spot. In, out, exhale, and once again, reverse direction. In, X. in, extend, X. flex. Nice. I heard it's gonna start snowing from tomorrow morning. It's pretty freezing here. So let's get hot in a slow flow way. Extend the legs, make a deep stretch. Pelvis side to side, sit bones back. Press to the base of the toes as you pull that base back with your fingertips. Good. Make a diamond shape with your legs and feet. Push the thigh down and lean slowly forwards, please. Now push away the tie and twist. Inhale. Exhale, twist. We'll turn the knee to the foot and internalize the hip for a moment as we lean back, hands behind, pressing the chest high. Try the other side. No compression on the internal hip. Relationship to the sacrum and release. Right? Knees together, feet wide as the mat, hands forward. Take a squat. Check in with the shoulders, the hips, the lower back. Press the arms into the shins, press the chest high. Inhale. Exhale, lean to one side and push the thigh away. Check the neck. 
Try the other side. Prepare the long spine. Tall heart. Exhale, press away. In today's version of Zoom, it's ever changing for me with my technical inability or my demagnetisms, whatever I'm doing with this machine. It's I'm not getting the the gallery view where I can normally see everyone. There we are. Hi everybody. <laughs> you look so beautiful. I am no longer alone. I love it. All right, I'm gonna pull away with my thumbs up, upper arm on the shin, drawing the bow, working inside the upper arm shoulder blade, and then continuing to clasp option, fingertips or wrist, or just hold the ground and relax. Try the other side. Bring the arm into the shin like a prayer malasana squat. Push the thigh away, face the upper arm against the shin. Inhale, big heart. Exhale, deep soul. Or, you know, long spine. And clasp the fingers, option. Or hold the crossing spine wrists with the arm lock hand. And release. Then, when you're ready, you take whatever you want to take to get yourself back so that you can kneel on the mat. I'm taking crow. I love the pressure point of my outer shin bone. Just the um, stomach meridian so we're improving digestion. Whenever we take crow, it's just beautiful. And then we'll kneel down, cross the toes. Cezano pose, hands on the thigh, push the top of the thigh close to the pelvis and try to shrug your shoulder blades away and back like as if spreading the wing. And come on to backs of the hands. I'm pretty far away, right? Do I look far away to you? It's okay. Okay, the backs of the hands on the thigh. Let's check the wrists, shoulders, blades up. Okay, a little more challenging is to invert the palm backwards and try to get on top of that thigh. Fingertip close to the hip. Try to push that down. It's a lot of stretch. Take it easy. It's awaken the eyeballs. Oof. A shot to the brain, beautiful. Waking up, we'll try the other side. One at a time is fine, it's easier. One at a time is totally fine. It's much easier as you like. With regular practice, that long, strong stretch up the forearm should feel up into the shoulder joint. Don't worry. Once again, backs of the hands to reset the wrists. Fingertips on the ground. Grip thumbs to the middle. Nice. Let's pull, walk back and press back. My toes are flexed as you like. I'm going to take a tiger pose, which is finger stance with a flexed spine. The tail is dropped. Stand down, palms down. Walking that dog, working the hips and shoulders side to side. Going to take one heel down and exhale. And press back. Inhale, I'm going to open the opposite leg and turn my pelvis to the side, the Scorpio. Exhale, inhale, exhale. Then I'm gonna inhale, plank forward to reset my front ribs and shoulder girdle, blades and joints. So then when I press back into my Scorpio, it's more like a downward dog alignment. 
And I will step forward in the long, deep, slow lunge on the floor. And hold that. And enjoy that long front, back, thigh, or whatever going on. Then the front leg, side hand will thumbs up, draw the archer's pose back. Check in with the spine. I might press my saffron, a cush spine, and twist the shoulder blades, correct spine, shoulder blades back. I might even catch my back foot, pull in and get alive. <sighs> Pause, breathe through it, feel the thigh feeling move up above the front pelvis into the core. Release. Back into the forward lunge. And inhale, full Scorpio. Adamukha Vrikshasana, downward facing Scorpio. Drop into a press of your preference. And up dog, inhale. Down dog, exhale. Walking that dog. Ultimately, opposite heel down. Next inhale, opposite leg up, pelvis to the side. Long core, deep shoulder. Feeling full back leg. Going to plank forward and reset my front ribs and shoulders square. And then push back like a dog with the Scorpio tail. Exhale. Inhale, pause forward. Exhale, finally, when the long step comes forward, grounding on the floor, extra breath. Same thing, archer's pose back. Pressing the sacrum a little more. In X twist. Deeper option, pulling the foot in. Breathe through the intensity. Feel that, wait for the stretch to move above the front thigh, above the front hip, into that deep belly core. Feel it. Beautiful. Release, please, back. To lunge, exhale. My breath count sucks, but uh, you know, let's just keep going. <laughs> Inhale, full Scorpio. Oh, exhale, deep press. Somebody has a dog. That's a Beautiful dog. I thought, was that a cat? Inhale, push up. That was a big cat. Exhale, press back. To down dog. Adamukha Svanasana. Down dog. I'm gonna slide up to kneeling or standing, slowly, slowly, coring up, pulsing, option up. I'm on my toenails. Kneeling, I'm up on my ballerina point, and I'm kneeling. Finally, I'm kneeling and standing as, a, as you know, try to stand up. Yes, good. And take your way up, your favorite way to stand. Namaste. All right, star people pose, reach for the star. Alien pose, who's the alien here? Exhale, lace down, squat, slow down, hands towards the floor, deep squat. Hands forwards. Oh. Try to keep your squat and bring your arms up, please. Beautiful. Take a moment to feel your, well, touch the finger, back touch, bend your elbows, hands to lace up, palms up, lace hands to the head. Drop your shoulder blades down into your rib cage. Exhale, navel in. Feel your deep seat. 
Inhale, don't lift your shoulder blades as you straighten your arms. Feel the blades go down. Beautiful. Now activate your legs. Try to stand up. See if your legs can hold you. Inhale, stand up. All right, exhale, arms down. No, I'm cut off. I'm, a, I'm on the Shoji screen. <laughs> I must stay. All right, I'm going to drop down into a wide stance crow and take the crow. That takes a little stewing, so we'll set it up as we prefer and we'll get into it as we need to. It might just be heels up, that's fine. Just keep the shins on the upper arms. Try to get your feet together and maybe even press the feet off the ground a little bit whatever you can do is fine make your way back to dog or you know walk or jump back that's a house shaker and drop into your press down to your press plank, push up, dog. Inhale, exhale, down dog. Beautiful. Inhale, first leg Scorpio. Exhale, lunge. Warrior one prep, back heel drops in. We're stepping forward, back heel is in. I'm all, we're already rising up. Core warrior, elbows into navel, upper arms around chest towards ribs. No twist. Elbows and navels. Elbows and navel touch. No twist. Elbows in, shield up. Look at your palm, fists. Reach back. Find your backbone. Find your back heel. Oh, you should reach for the sky. Lunge forward. Look at the thumbs. I like Kali Mudra, Kali Mudra with the interlaced fingers, extended index and thumbs. And inhale, pull up out of your back ribs. And exhale, namaste, wrist pressing between the elbows. Big push. The shoulders go back. And lunge, pulse, lunge, pulse. All right, then we're gonna turn to warrior two. Warrior two, and open to the side. Your way is fine. I like to line up my ankles, so I step in line. That's up to you. Now we're in warrior two, lunging forward. I like thumbs up to open my heart, engage my shoulders, but you're fine as you please. Lunging. It's hard for me to teach this, but it's not that hard to do. Just Turn the back leg side, back fist to the lower spine above the sacrum, the lumbar, and inhale, reach back. And exhale, repeat the other side as you lunge, reach forward. Inhale, reaching back. Try to lift your chest from your backbone. Exhale, reach forward. One more, inhale, reach back as you lunge forward. Exhale, reach forward, continue to lunge. Back to warrior two, backs of the wrist touch one another. Back heel comes in and squat and drop the back wrist, keep together. Drop the arm, stand up, straight legs, circle back and up. Inhale, exhale, squat, keep the wrist connected at all times. I've enclosed myself into a room and put up my fasuma, my giant wooden wall with silk, silk embroidered screen panels because it's, you keep it warm, give you a nice visual. Inhale, back and up. Get it over your head. Reach, it's a, you know, woo, back bend and back to neutral squat. Activate core. Now use the legs to open that back. Ooh, back to squat, reactivate re -activate your deep abs. Beautiful. Inhale, back and up. Get it. Ooh, shoo. And back to your neutral, yummy core. Good. 
Inhale, exhale, twist. Inhale, exhale, twist. Watch my hands, little magic show. And turn my hand in, push that thighs. I rotate my shoulder in and the other arm is relaxed. But one arm is straight and it dips to the floor. Woo! Deep groin, inhale. Release that lower back. One arm only straight. Please, but Jonah, straighten that left arm. Jonah, straighten your, yes. Oh, it's an illusion to me. Your arm is straight. Good work. Should have known. All right. Then we'll drop down to the floor with my warrior one, two, three. Inhale, kick back. Don't kick the rice paper. Exhale, press forward. Let's go for 10. Straight arms, okay. Straight arms, okay. Nine. Eight. Seven, exhale, forward. Inhale, back. Exhale, five, maybe. I lost count as usual. Four, approximately. Three, two, your breath style is fine. I'm just making the S sound to activate my navel core. One, let's take it down. And up dog, down dog. At your leisure, your way, take your body and take it back. Delicious. Other side, inhale, Scorpio. Exhale, lunge, set up your warrior stands, back heel drops in. Start to stand, At elbows pull towards the navel. Arms wrap around the lovely chest towards the upper front ribs. And we're working. Alternate shoulder blades. Pulling the ribs off the spine, delicious. Shield up, elbows together. It's not easy. We're gonna take that back heel weight, pull the elbows together, bend arms over the face, find the backbone. Ooh, you hit the limit, reach for the sky, gaze on the thumbs. Interlace, small ring and index. Small ring and middle finger interlace, index and thumbs extend. Inhale, gaze on the thumbs. Exhale, press straight down to the heart bone and lunge forward, release the back, activate the abs core, pelvic floor, pushing palms, shoulder blades, feel the chest, feel the belly, feel the ribs. I'm just pushing together really good and my shoulders are out of my neck. I'm free. And I'm going to step to the side. I turn back to the back leg, turning back to the back leg. For me personally, I like to sweep into the front leg line. Inhale, reach up and take the backs of the wrists together. Exhale, thumbs up. Go deep. Go deep. Once again, deep. And we'll. <clears throat> Try to lift the chest up and reach back, inhale. Exhale, lift the chest up from the lumbar, exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Gorgeous. Back to warrior two, thumbs up. And the back arm drops down. Yeah, and the and the back, the, the backs of the wrists both touch one another with equal force, joint forces. The back heel comes in. We squat, drop the arms, keep the wrists. Go behind you, straighten your legs. And inhale, arms up and over. Take a little back bend. Ooh, your shoulder. Exhale, back to neutral, back to core. Yummy. Inner thighs, inner pelvis, inner abs. Inhale, strong legs. Strong back, shoulders, whoosh. Exhale, back to yummy. 
Back to safe. Back to base. Inhale. Oh, you. Oh, And back to safety. Comfortable, strong front power. Couple more on your own. Oh, oh. A little dramatic, but isn't that life? Life's pretty dramatic, right? Inhale, back and up. Oh, And back to delicious and detox. Or, you know, release the core tension that surfaced in the lumbar, the QL. Ooh, quadratus. Lumbar, I'm getting that lower back. Oh, one side's tighter, isn't it? The same lower back that's tighter is probably the same upper inner groin that's tighter, if you don't haven't noticed that. That, that side is needing a little longer hold, maybe. If you like. And turn that palm in, a little magic show, a little slide of the hand. The internal shoulder locks into the blade. Ooh, get that rib down. Ooh. Hmm. Your goal is to touch the shoulder to the floor, but who really cares as long as it feels good. Ooh. I haven't achieved that yet, but we're getting close. We're back up. Beautiful. Drop back to the lunge when you're ready. We'll set up to kick straight back with pelvis four for 10 presses, straight arms, thin arms, as you like. Inhale back, exhale forward, Woo. one, Ex two, Oy. three, four, five, we're halfway there, let's get it on. Three more, that was four, come on. Three. Go slow motion, go hyperspace. Two, a little stronger. Let's take it down, what do you got? Show me what you got. Good. And push it straight arms, get out of the shoulders, get into the back, lumbar. Beautiful, let's take down dog, that was nice. Down dog, one. Deep breath, please. Two. Three. Four, halfway there, long hold, gorgeous. Five. Wiggle your base of toes, make a slightly longer stance. Heels don't even touch the floor. You're working to your optimal depth. Six, seven. Eight. Planking forward, long shot. Tough stuff. Roll over onto the fronts of your toes, nails, the insteps. You're pulsing, you're kneeling, you're standing, you're, you're sliding. <laughs> Oof, you're, you're going for it. Oh my God, it's like a handstand because that's what it is. Prep and then kneel down. Check in with your wrist. Make sure you're cool. And when you're ready, you'll jump, push to stand on a slow flow. Inhale, press up to stand up. Ooh. <clears throat> or just exhale, stretch out. Ooh. And rise in your own style your own pace, when you feel so powerful, reach for the sky and enjoy yourself. I suggest elbows in to reset your shoulders. Oh, and finally, straight arms, gaze on the thumb, reach way up, feel your side body long, exhale, namaste. So nice. All right, little side crow, nothing fancy. Just go to the floor, chill out, it's a slow flow, we got we have time. I have a real clock with a real battery. So I'm the timekeeper. Now we're just gonna, I'm gonna turn, but you don't have to turn. I'm just showing you the profile. You turn to the side, it is quite nice to turn to the side. For you two, why? Because you keep your hands on the front of the mat. Let me change the camera for this slow flow. So if, I if you turn to the side, you keep your hands there, you can keep your, you know, your chaturanga jump back, right? Or, you know, keep on the mat. Turn to the side, maybe. 
get your upper arm to your outer thigh. And if you want to sit down and walk, step your feet up, that's fine. If you want to opposite from the arm lock, the free side hand, if it wants to reach off the mat, that's fine. We'll just dip the chest towards the floor. Let the feet come up, extend the legs, maybe even roll your pelvis up off the ground by leaving your painful outer thigh on your arm. That's part of the detox and the this getting releasing the toxins and tension, which releases the pain, which allows us to, to absorb deeper massage. That's yes, it does hurt. Yes, it's yes, we do fall. You know what falling means, young lady? You're you're on the verge of flying. Falling is flying practice. A great unknown yogi in a deep cave taught me that. And probably one of the better teachers that nobody knows. When I was young, deep jungles of India. Wow. Okay, then the uh, then you come back up to the squat. The elbow goes into the hip. You sit. Here's the pro, here's the the other side you can see i'm sitting on my back elbow my hip arm still on my thigh and my free leg steps back like a warrior two so i might be able to just kind of hang out my back foot on the ground straight here's with the back view i just put my back foot on the ground like a warrior two back foot i'm just sitting on my hip on my elbow i'm massaging the hell out of my outer thigh with my tricep Humorous bone, it's tough stuff, I know. But it's a massage, it's beautiful. And then, as I mentioned before, and then we're gonna exit, if you don't know or remember, when the forehead touches the floor, you will notice the back foot must slide forward for your forehead to touch the floor. And that's what how you get into a balanced position when you're for, not the top of your head, but your forehead will make on the floor will make your back foot slide and then the back leg comes up. At that moment, you, you might notice that you're in balance. Just a little information, if you can pick that up, it's all good. Let's try one time together. When you are in a nothing squat and you twist to the side, put your elbow up against your side of your pelvis, you put your free foot back and straight, watch my back foot in the dark over there, when I put my forehead down, the back foot slides forwards. And then you'll notice when the forehead's on the floor, the leg can come up, but then you're like, oh, I'm in balance. And then you squat and notice that technical reality of physics. Good for you. Ouch, that was awesome. Arno, he took a jump back. That was real, that was some real stuff right there. Oh. We're getting tough. Inhale up, exhale back. I need to take a break and check my wrists. I welcome you to join me. I'm gonna sit back with my toes flexed or not. I'm gonna put my elbows down, come on to the backs of my spread fingers, and then straighten my arms and feel my wrist. Ooh. I might ask, invite you to lower your head and see what happens in your neck and shoulders. Ah. And flex your spine and, and just do that. Ooh, kind of pull back, hip, find the stretch. Your lower spine or wherever takes pressure out of the wrist. Then we'll roll the wrist and take the finger stance option, if you like. And that means fingers spread and grip to the thumbs towards each other at the middle of the mat. I'm gonna plank forwards, bend my elbows slightly. I've got, I have a lot of weight on my thumbs. I know it's not easy. A tennis ball under your palm, any kind of ball under your palms right now. Boy, wouldn't that be handy. Ooh, that would feel good. Ooh, props are great. The earth is a prop. Body's a prop. We pull back, palms down, stand down. That was so nice. Then kneel down, take the seis on no pose, cross your toes, hands on the thigh. Knees potentially wide, tongue to the roof of the mouth. Take five deep breaths or take a drink of water or whatever you need to do. We'll resume to the second side of side throw, count in your scissor splits. If I can get out of here. <laughs> 
in 30 seconds. Very well. Very good. Oh, these weigh a ton. This is old hard wood. Ah, underneath these silk portraits of emptiness, Zen style. All right, so we're back. You're coming back in onto your mat, please. From the dog, we're gonna come. Slide forward to the squat. Let's roll it out. Rolling, rolling forward. Up, down dog, but instead of down dog, you're gonna slide up. Oof. And kneel down. Gorgeous. Gonna jump to a stand, or as you like. Yo. Eagle saw. And the twist in the opposite side. Upper arm comes to the outer front thigh. If the heels need to come up, the heels need to come up. But right now, I'm going to ask you to sit down. I'm just going to ask you to sit down in this pose and turn it into a deep tie flow. So the feet step away a little bit. I'm sitting down on the floor. Just step down a little bit. Keep my arm against my thigh. I'm working. It's like a, it's like a mat but in a long squat. And we're just prepping that lower back and the mechanical understanding. Now the arm lock is locked, so that's where the hand goes. The other arm is free, so we can step away and go super wide, like a like a bicep pec push up, working opposite chaturanga, super wide press, so that we can get the chest. Precisely to the floor, oh, to the floor without popping that shoulder. So you go super wide to the side and lock that arm. Try to get your chest down, extend your legs, maybe even pivot your pelvis up with that burning pressure from your humerus against your, uh, your femur. Isn't that painful? Another thing you can do, look, hey, as I mentioned to some of you that asked about that pain, you can roll on a very firm core foam bolster or a tree and uh, you know, release all that toxins and tension from the outer IT band. The other quick thing you can do as a yogi is just work your arm against your thigh higher up. You're using your elbow to uh, go higher up, oh, towards the hip, you know, oof, oh. You won't get very far because the lower back says no. My spine can only twist so far, but that's something. And that also reminds us real quick, I know this is a flow, you know, I'm a teacher, but to when you push your arm against your thigh and massage it, you must push your thigh back against your arm. It's a 50-50 game. Don't go out of alignment and compress your hip and compromise your outer knee. Keep the 50-50 arm length game all the time when you're arm locking. And a twist, yeah, resist back. Yeah, empire strikes back. There we go, oh, popular culture reference that nobody understands where I live. So nice. Then when we come back up and we are, you might need to lift your heels, it's okay if you do, but the hands come down, the elbow comes on the hip, you lean against the elbow or you lean against the triceps, oh, if the feet slip off the ground a little bit, you just put them back down. We're just warming up. This is a deeper massage, but outer IT, iliotibio, tensor fascia lata, outer thigh, sheath band. Yes. Oh, a little bit. Mm. Again, 
Ooh, 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 whatever. Sometimes my elbow slips off my hip on my tight side and goes up into my ribs. Is that a problem? Not at all. It's great. It's all massage. Whatever happens. Then a quick review. I'm not going to talk this as much, but now I'll show you my back foot in the light. Um, just in case it's interesting, when I slide that foot back, when I put my forehead down, you'll notice it slides a lot. And then it, by the time my forehead's down, it comes up light. And then when it comes up, I can counterbalance my head up. And you'll be, might be a little surprised at how quickly that happens, even though it's painful on the outer thigh. One more time option. But first, I'm going to lift my heels up to get off my back hand. And I'm going to put the back of my back hand on the mat and just press to release the, the tension on the dominant weight bearing wrist, which is the back hand where the elbow meets the hip, right? Spread the fingers to spread to widen the wrist. And then do take finger stance to for many reasons. Feel good, feel strong, feel massage nerves and a re energetic flow. Very strong. Grip makes hug. Hug makes shoulder, shoulder makes ribs, ribs makes core, all the way. Inner rib, inner belly, inner pelvis, inner thigh, inner feet. There's your connection right there. But that's another thing. I gotta stop the information so we can keep moving. Um, good. Oh, we're gonna do a live training one day and, and I could talk all day long. You could just video it and share it with your friends. All right, then we're gonna release that. I'm not gonna jump back into Chaturanga. I'm gonna chill out and squat for a moment. You can jump back into Chaturanga. I'm gonna chill out, check my lower back. There's always time to jump back. I'm just pausing, checking in with the effect on my, particularly in my lumbar. And as you potentially shift side to side, see what's going on in the hips. They're compressed right now, clearly. So that when we stand down at Uttanasana by straightening the legs into a forward fold, the hips open up. You feel your outer thighs, bands, outer shins. You find your base of your small toes, outer ankles, outer shins, outer knees, outer thighs, deep outer hip. Find your seat. Even you can interlace your fingers and put your palms down on lasse, push the floor and see how that locks your internal shoulder massage compression as you shift side to side, if that makes sense for you. Beautiful. So nice. Then we'll take our flow. Chaturanga up dog, down dog. We'll prepare for our next set. If you want to rest and watch, that's fine. But I'm going to keep going if that's all right. We're going to go on to uh, deep floor shortly. So let's let's finish our, our slow flow, shall we? All right, so here we go back. Press up. I'm going to kneel back and take my thumbs forwards to the edge of the mat. So my wrists are feeling it and I want to get a little stronger, my pecs and my biceps to support my front ribs a little more, which ultimately supports the lower back, right? Wide press, it's gonna open up your lower back. No need to compress all the time and chaturanga triceps and traps. And just work it out because you can. Why? Because the wrists are so free when the hands are wide and the thumbs are forward. It affords the ability to shift completely almost into one wrist and then the other, like this. And then we take it back to dog. All right, here comes the full slow flow. If it's all right with you, step to the first foot forward, warrior one. We're going up to warrior one. I go back into a standing mode. I'll pull up the camera a little bit. Now, warrior one. 
Exhale, warrior two. In X, warrior three. In my style, which is the back wrist, feet squat, wide squat. Couple of squats, work that inner line. Base of large toe, inner ankle, inner calf, inner knee, inner thigh, inner seat, inner pelvis, inner ab, navel, rib, inner arm, inner elbow, inner forearm, inner wrist, thumbs. So all that's going on together. Beautiful. And then um, I'm going to go into triangle pose. I wish I, I could reach through and adjust you. That's really where my best uh, share would be, would be when, when I make contact, that's my real, uh, which perhaps stands me apart, but here we are. This is also very good to be better. Five, four, three, two, one. Always put a little back bend in it. You can always come back to core. Move. Then you go back to core by putting the hand down and lunging forward. I'm gonna do an, I'm gonna pick my back heel up for a moment, please, so I can lunge and feel my back front thigh. You got it? Yeah, that's all, nothing. Then I'm gonna take a little. Like I'm gonna strike a watermelon on the beach with my elbow. Pull up and back, as far as I can, twisty back, bend, ooh, and I'm gonna drop it in, ooh. Right into the sand, the golden hot sand, ooh, you saw. Pulling the hips back, straighten the front leg a little, just feeling juicy, All right? Then I'll arch your back one more time. Catch the back foot right away. Go deep. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. I'm gonna let go. Keep my hand on my thigh. I'm gonna roll over my toe and kneel forward so my hips over my knee. It's a short stance. I'm gonna push up off that thigh and reach the back legs, side arm beat back behind me, elbow behind my head. I'm gonna look back, sorry, look back, and I'm gonna take my front leg side hand and pull that arm backwards as I lunge forwards. I'm gonna pull that arm backwards as I lunge forwards. Feel that whole long side body. Ooh, work it. Get a little into that side, body of the pulling side. Ooh, feel it travel down around your back side front thigh. You get it? You got it? Oh my God. What a long fascia sheath line. Just love it. Then another time, we'll just drop the elbow outside the front thigh that just got pulled and we're all set up to stand down and take whatever we like, whatever you're into, hand inside the foot, arm outside the leg, back heel up, back heel down, just namaste kneeling or straight arm standing, or your thing, do your thing, enjoy, five, four, three, I'm just doing a kneeling dip off the back knee, back heel up, because I'm going to go into an arm lock. So that's the real tough stuff but for me, but my old fighter shoulders. But I'm just going to say no, and I'm going to push my wrist down. So I internalize the shoulder, the elbow, and the wrist. I'm going to reach through. I'll show you shamelessly. I'll show you the back side, what happens when I reach through my dangly bits, and I get to the front of the back thigh, back of my fingers, and I just clasp my fingers, or I go for the crossed arm, the arm behind the back wrist, or whatever you're into, whatever you can do. And 
and then wherever you got was great. God is good, good God. And when you stay there for a long time, and then when you're ready, enjoy me by letting go, kicking back on the baby Scorpio flow. That means my kneeling side is my forearm side. I'm just chilling, feeling the effect, the practice. Just chilling out of the floor, no shit. Then on, then kneel down if you need to look up at me. It's okay for a moment, but I'm gonna ask you to bring your forearm elbow in between your wrists, hugging in between the wrist and the shoulder, and spread the fingers with the thumb up so that if you do decide to stand down, your forearm takes it alignment-wise into the shoulder joint. Mm. I just asked you to hug your forearm elbow in a little bit, spread your fingers, thumbs up, so that when you stand down, the hugged in elbow will draw a straight line through the shoulder joint. As you straighten the supporting straight arm, mm. Sink into that. Oh. Ooh, not tonight. Anyway, it's slow flow. I'm not gonna do that personally. I'm not even gonna teach that. So um, then you then we let rest and push back and take the other side, but first. Let's roll the spine and clear the, the tension out, right? So we'll just, you know, flex. So flexed plank is what I call tiger pose. Now, I'm on my fingertips, which is extra. You can put your palms down, it's tough. You can put your palms down and stand up and flex forward, full tiger, yes. Get strong and long, strong in the front, long in the back. And then up dog, down dog, or whatever you're into, and chill out. Up dog, up, up cobra for a minute, thighs down, elbows bent, pelvis side to side, shoulder blades twisted a little. And then I can pop up if I want to go strong, knees off the ground, straight on, and, and pull back and down. <sighs> Then the opposite foot comes forward. Take the standing flow warrior one. Warrior straight, warrior one. Reach for the sky, gaze on the thumb. Prayer down, warrior two. Warrior stance, warrior squat three. <laughs> And a few squats, please, perhaps. A little resist almost, maybe. Feel it pull your inner arm to your inner rib. What happens inside when you resist yourself and you move your legs? Feel the rib connect to the inner pelvis, seat, inner thigh, inner feet. Get something good going on with it. Integral awareness by resisting your wrist when you feel your ribs. Work your legs, spread your toes, use your breath, find your banda. Beautiful. Then I'm gonna um, come down to the lunge. Again, I'm gonna just arch your pose, twist back a little bit if you like. Just go right for the foot, hold for five. Let's get in it. Hmm. Four, three, lift your front toes. Make sure you're in your inner heel, base of toes. Two, one, letting go. Roll over the back toe. Take a short kneeling stance. Get your pelvis based over your shin. Take your back leg side, arm back, elbow behind the head. Lunge. Take your front leg side hand and pull that tricep back. Look back a little bit. Lunge, pull back, 
Lunge forward, pull back, lunge forward, both at the same time. Find your center, one more. I know it's hard to watch me and do, it's tough. We're doing a good job to working this, this platform. And then, you know, I just, all I did is I, well, I just, the hand that grabbed the, well, it's too much, but anyway, some people are interested. Real quick, the arm that's getting pulled, the back leg side arm that's getting pulled, that hand switches to, grabs the pulling arm of the front leg side arm. And the front leg side arm straightens off to the side, and that's what gives you that long side body pull as you lunge forward, whoa! Then you could even move that hand from above the elbow to below the elbow towards the wrist, and you feel it move up that side body towards the outer shoulder blade from the rib. Ooh, and finally, just like an arm, just like martial arts, you catch the wrist in jujitsu, you finally slide up to the wrist. The back hand, back leg side hand is pulling the to the wrist of the front leg side hand, and that all pulls off to the side. Whoa, feel that longness releasing so deep to the core and beyond. Oof, the saffron. Oh, and down through the seat in the outer leg. Oh, or the inner leg muscle, the outer thigh band. Then, anyway, we drop the elbow outside the thigh. Oh, Golly gosh, I'm gonna step my back foot back. I'm gonna straighten my back leg to reset my long, yeah, protect your knee, in, increase this, the peace by releasing the tension. Then reach for your favorite full deep pose as you like, it's your, it's your game now. Do the tough stuff real quick. Just gonna push through. Try to get the backs of my hand on the front of my back side. <clears throat> like that on my front pelvis. And do whatever I can. Okay. Wheels. Yeah. Stay there for a long time. If you're like me, you're ready to get out of there. So you just come down and chill. Let your kidneys breathe, your liver, pancreas. Take a moment to let your filters flush. Drop onto your forearm of your kneeling side and take a baby. Scorpio, straight arm push, straight arm hand push. So nice. Then the, the forearm down elbow will hug in briefly to get really under the shoulder to be fair, joint. And then the fingers spread with the thumb up. And then I'm gonna stand down on that forearm. Whew. The upper opposite arm stray and just drop my head and see what's up in my shoulder, in your deep shoulder joint, or what you ever you feel. Then you can go ahead and do whatever you like to do. Press down. Take your favorite movement. I'm gonna turn my thumbs forward. My wrists need a lot of inner thumb support right now. I'm gonna power back. Dog index figure four potential. Base of index at the palm, base of ring finger at the palm. 
Feel all the base of the fingers and then let the finger pads, the tips be the, 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 the secondary connection. Let the palms be the base. Palms flat and then drop down. Good job. Somebody's jumping in. Oh, Natalie's jumping in from Paris. I think Northern Paris for the, uh, the uh, deep floor work, which we're gonna start now. I hope that was okay. It's welcome, Natalie. You're my favorite. Don't tell anybody. Okay. <laughs> we'll take the squat. Natalie came all the way to this place and trained. It's insane. That's insane. With Masai Sensei also. Next year, we'll ask Natalie Sensei if you're interested to, if when the borders open and we don't have quarantine and that you can come and train and be on my land and ask Natalie how she liked it. Little local forest festivals. That was pretty crazy. What a good timing. All right. Well, I hope you're okay with me shifting to deep floor. I'm keeping with the schedule. If you're still gonna, if you're gonna stay on for this part of the flow, it's gonna get juicy, but on the floor. So welcome from the squat. Namaste. We'll take a moment to chill out. To so take a break if you need to. I'm just gonna bow in. You wanna skip that part, take get some water, make a pee pee or whatever. We'll start the deep floor flow. Namaste. The tongue is effortlessly reaching for the roof of the mouth, which activates the throat muscles that control the flow pressure, breath, blood, and energy. as the mudra of the tongue supports the bandha of the throat to control the pressure from the head to the heart. The mind is clear. The heart is a strong And my spirit is free. Free is my breath. Deepest inhale. Aho. Shanti. Namas. Eh. Arigata. Zaymas. Ana. Uh, merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Let's stretch out, please. Becca from Norway. Hey, Masha, you have a you have a, you have a country woman with Masha since you have a country woman joining you now. Rebecca Retan from your hometown, Norway. Your current hometown. All right. 
Welcome, Rebecca. Thank you. So, you got a babysitter. <laughs> Welcome. Four, this is the second part of the world. Four, right? We'll make a diamond. Welcome. You're welcome to meet yourself. If that helps you and everyone else to hear me, uh, you're 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 welcome to mute yourself to help let everyone everyone hear me teach. You're welcome to unmute yourself if you need to ask any questions or share some helpful information to me. Welcome. We're gonna twist with our diamond feet and twist. Right? Let's do a little, let's do a little golden lotus set, shall we? That's always fun. Do you like that? Do you remember that? Let's review. Let's begin by warming up. If you need a little blanket, if it's your, if it's anything like here, it might be a little chilly. So if you need just something to roll your spine on, you can, I'll give you a moment to get that now. We're gonna rock our spine. So make sure the comfortable. Right? Then whenever you're ready, across the ankle, namaste. We just chanted. So here we are breathing the mantra of the body. Crossing the ankle, exhaling back. Inhaling forward. Exhale back. Cross the opposite ankle. Inhale forward. Exhale back. You're welcome to try to balance on your shoulder blades when you go back. And balance on your pelvis when you come up. All right. Then we're going to recline on our back, extend the, with the feet together, extend the legs to the core, to the lower lumbar limit. You, you can place the fingers behind your head if you want to lift your head to increase the strength and flex the knees, inhale towards the chest, exhale into the extension this time, emphasizing the exhale into the power. And then if you need to hook your toe with your pants to keep warm, we're going to bicycle so you can prepare your pants if you need to. I like to hook my big two, four toes around the pant cuff, and then I'm going to keep my pants on. My feet, I'm gonna cycle slowly, exhaling on the kick, on the extension, the preferred breath, it's most welcome. I'm gonna try to keep a little space between my chin and my chest and work more from my side ribs to move my shoulder blades so that my your, our elbows move towards our opposite knees on the exhale. Slow, deep flow. And your lower back, if and when your lower back, I would say when, starts to pain, you have to, you need to rest. So I say put the feet down as a gesture, lift the pelvis and stretch the core. And then say to Banda, a little bridge pose. Stretch the core, strengthen the back. Little pulse on the pelvis, release any nerve pattern, release the muscle. Then I'm gonna cross one leg across my body like I'm twisting and twist. Just kick one leg across and twist a little. Press your sacrum perhaps, or just lean back. Release any residual tension in your lumbar, in your waist. If 
You know why they call it your waist, right? It holds waste, it's the colon. So let's go ahead and clear out the waist. I have a sexy waist, if that's possible. I mean, a nice curve in your obliques, you know? Just release any fat or water that we might be holding step by step, meaning our form. Then I'm gonna ask us to come up slowly. I'm gonna pull my own knees and kick up. Okay, good. Now, I always wanna be closer to you. In my view, I'm far away, but I heard that I'm not far away, but I have to show my, what I'm doing. I hope this is okay with you. Now, I'm gonna take one side and hook the arm in, from the inner leg, I'm gonna to hook to the outside, clear? And I have a little twist the leg side to side. See what's going on in the sacrum, lumbar, and the hip. And I'm gonna catch the outer foot. Can you see my hands and feet, everybody? No, it's up too far. Okay, then we're gonna kick it out. Check the neck. Take the shoulder. Of course you feel, might feel the leg. Let's see what else is going on in your back as you shift forward to your natural limit. Repeating, just one hand's on the floor, one leg is straight on the floor. I'm just seeing how far you can get, what happens. If you get a little, any kind of little pain in the lower back, go ahead and squat, a long, long squat so that you can have more resistance, more support to go deeper from your standing foot. Perhaps getting closer to the floor that way as your front rib or chest presses to your thigh, puts on the brakes a little bit. Then if you want to straighten both legs, if, it's, you can, if you can roll like that, you go ahead and do that. Otherwise, go as deep as you like. If you do get, both legs straight down, then go ahead and take your pelvis side to side, get your sit bones back, long legs, long legs, sexy seat, gorgeous waist. <laughs> then we're gonna come up, interlace the fingers around that clasped foot and pull back, bend both knees or stand down or extend the leg down and go as deep as you can with the heel over the knee, pulling the knee towards the floor. For five, four, self-breathing, three, two, One. I'm gonna use my swing leg to come up. Now up. Once you're up, I'm gonna suggest that you kind of prop your arm, your leg a little higher up on your arm. It's a little higher up on your towards your shoulder, and see if you can put both hands down. And you know, extend your leg, arm lock leg. Yeah. But do try to keep your the shoulder blade back, counter 50-50, arm and leg all the time. Find your alignment by keeping isometric joint forces equal force. Then I'm going to turn my thumbs forward so that I can endure the weight on my wrists with my thumbs forward when I try to lift my pelvis up. Good. Very nice. If advanced people can do whatever they want, Ashtavatara, whatever. But then eventually we're gonna vinyasa gentle deep floor back by the lower free leg. We'll just cross like you're crossing your leg and just kneel up, nothing. Just kneel up, cross your leg, just kneel up. Step your free, step your free leg back, and now you had an arm arm lock lunge. Okay, yeah. Then, if you want to bend both elbows a little bit, try to get your foot out, your front foot out first. 
and try to dip in and extend your leg a little bit on the floor, just lie down or whatever you want to do. If you join the deep floor because it fits your schedule, but you want to power up, power up. Do whatever you want. But on the floor, the front ribs are supporting the lower spine. It's so fine. And then push up if you can and kick that arm lock leg back. Drop onto your shin and your forearm on the same side. You do not need to stand down, but I'm gonna stand down onto my forearm. A little more core, a little more lumbar, a little more shoulder. And then I'm gonna step behind into a side, cross leg side plank on my forearm and put my hand on my hip. Is that clear? I'll show you the back side. We were just here. I just step behind, stand on my forearm, and put my hand on my hip. I'm on the sides of my feet. All I did, just nothing. A little more advanced. Some people like to squat and go deep, much deeper into their shoulder by lifting the pelvis. But that's a little early. And that might be a little too deep, so don't care about that. You might like that. Beautiful, then we'll release, come back onto the hands and feet, push back and feel the effect. We're preparing to jump or slide through for the other side. The hands are on the front of the mat, the fingers are spread, index fingers forward. We're gonna take a long dog and walk it out, allowing the shoulders and hips to move side to side. Pushing with the hands to ensure that you're not moving forward and backward. The effect, the benefit is maybe more side to side. So work through the hips and the shoulder joints. Then I'm going to slide through by coming onto the fronts of the feet like a ballerina, flanking forward, flex spine like a tiger, kneeling down, pulsing, standing up. I'm on my toenails, sliding up. Kneeling down, and now sliding up and kneeling down. Then pull through and kneel down. And then cross your ankles and pull through some more and sit down. Great. Then we're going to move up. Can't see me right. I'm gonna. I'm gonna to the other side. I have to back up a little bit. Take the opposite arm through the leg to the outer calf. Might need some more light. Okay. There we go. Like that. Catch the foot and kick it out. Shift it forward. Repeat. Nice. Repeat. I recommend a little stand down on the opposite foot. Little support, a little check in, make sure there's no strain in the lower back. Go a little deeper. You might be able to go deeper, I don't know. You're welcome to try. Now, the side to side, sit bones back. Self breathing. Activate front thigh. You might even hook your hip crease with your thumb, finger. Middle you know, two fingers towards the floor. Finger stance, adjust. Mudra. And activate the thigh under your thumb. And squeezing the front thigh. And we'll come back up. Interlace the fingers and pull onto the back. You need a cushion for your spine. Go ahead and set that up. And then when you're ready, you can recline. Doing the same thing on the second side, which is arm lock, entrelacé, pull back. Bend the knees if it's painting, stand down, and eventually extend and pull the knee towards the floor for five, four, three, two, one. 
And use the free leg to swing forward and back. Inhale forward, exhale back. Go forward, exhale back. Inhale, rise up. From here, you may like to try to get the leg a little higher up on the shoulder. A little far as you can up under your shoulder. See if you can get your hands on the floor, crossing, cross kicker we did not do on the first side, but I mean, there it is, my body wants it. So then I'm going to put my hands down whenever I, you're ready, try to lift the pelvis up, oh sorry, you might extend your leg a couple of times first, get that hamstring. <laughs> Remember equal force as the leg extends, the shoulder pulls, the arm pulls back. Find the kick and the press, equal alignment, and go like that. Gorgeous. Then try to reset and lift the pelvis a little bit. If you like to do other things, of course, you can do whatever you like to do. That's your thing. But for now, just keeping it simple for the deep floor. Now, the free leg crosses, just like you're crossing your leg to stay warm and comfortable. Just cross your leg, then kneel up, walk your hands forward and walk your foot back. You're in an arm lock lunge, right? Yeah. Then again, uh, if you want to try to get your shoulder behind your calf, maybe pull your hips back first. Try to kick your foot out. Maybe bend your knee and try to lower down to the floor and extend your leg. Feel the support of your front ribs from the floor, releasing your lumbar, lower back ribs. Oh. Feel your psoas core in your deep back seat and you extend your leg. Mm. Resting your cheek on the floor helps you to release your neck, your upper back. Subtly and slowly push up best you can. Kick back the arm lock leg and rest on the shin side forearm. Yeah, and chill here or stand down on that forearm, deep shoulder, opposite arm straight. Lovely. Now, what I'm going to ask us to do is to consider to step behind and take that side plank pose. Here's the profile, just on my forearm, chilling. Now, if you want to take the squat, you're welcome. Go ahead, it's deep, but yeah, you can. If you do take the squat, even if you can't see me right now, it's okay. Put your pelvis, you can also put your hand on your hip or the free arm can reach over your head towards your lower floor hand to have a strong side and a long side, if you get me. <sighs> Beautiful. We'll turn back to the front, check the effect, and rest for a moment. Wonderful. I take my vinyasa up dog, down dog, whatever you're into, softer, nice, bent elbows, thighs down, hips and pelvis and shoulders side to side, releasing the lumbar compression. And back, beautiful. All right, I said golden lotus, thumbs forwards. Slide, slide on your toenails, on your insteps. Slide, thumbs forward, wide hands, thumbs forward. Very stable, inner hug, inner wrist, thumb base, slide in, beautiful. Cross your ankles and come through to sit. 
Take a little boat pose and reset your core. I just did a reverse lace lock like this with the backs of the fingers coming together and interlacing and pulling. Okay, and the thumbs pressing. Those fingertips go between the shins and I cross my ankles. I'm very, why is that a stabilizer of the upper core? Because reverse lace externally rotates your shoulders and gives you a big hug. That's what that does. Regular lace internally rotates your shoulders and it's a great stretch, but it does not activate upper core. I just tell you, this is reverse engineering. So instead of entrelacé, it's reverse interlace. As you pull the fingers apart, it activates the joints, shoulders and so on. But when the thumbs push together, it activates the core. It's a little bit different. So it's joint pull, core muscle press. Don't care, but I just took that, I tell you what, I'm doing. Now I'm across the ankle, reverse lace lock, pull the fingers, push the thumbs, try to balance. As, I, as we lift our chest bone, the true Padipurna Navasana, the full moon expression of the pose is to balance on the sit bones, which is possible, but highly improbable. So you just keep lifting the chest bone, lowering the shoulder blades, getting the hug, getting lots of strength and stabilizing the back from the ribs. And then we try to get on the sit bones, the feet will go down, that's okay. Just, you know, get on your sit bones and try to balance on them. It's such a fun practice to recognize there is a deeper full alignment base to all seated poses, Iyengaris, Astangis, and Yogis of virtue. They're, the seat bones back is the forward bend and the sacrum forward is the back bend. But in the interim, the, the boat poses both, the back bend and the forward bend. It's such a gorgeous thing. And once you understand that to get on your sit bones, if you let go, then you turn on your internal pelvic core. Woo! Oh, do you feel a little lift between your seat bones? Wasn't that exciting? And then the legs extend. Oh. And then, you know, oh, what? Oh, oh, if you're not sure what's going on in your lower back, we can all just chill out, put down a cushion if we need to, recline and do the same thing. I'm a little shy with my, my skinny little rooster leg, so I'm gonna put my pants around my toe, plus it's warmer. So now we're on the floor and, we're gonna scissor, hold the head, check the neck. I'm not suggesting you pull too hard on your head, but you know, it's okay to stretch. You do it anyway. When you wake up, right? Check your neck. <sighs> There's lots of contra contraindications, danger zones here. It's not advised, but whatever. The real deal is to and activate the rib of the side you want, shoulder blade you want to pull. The side rib is what lifts the shoulder blade, not the pulling the head. I understand that, you understand it. Use your obliques, Ooh, use your rib to belly muscles, Ooh, the core rotators, Ooh, internal, external, Ooh, oos, oos, and you hit the limit. Put your feet down, you lift your pelt. When you hit the limit, you lift your pelvis and stretch your core sheath and strengthen your back, good. Some people like to reverse lace to get their shoulder joints rotated out. And here's the thing that if you didn't know, if you inter you've been interlacing for 50 years or 10 years or whatever behind your back, that internally rotates your shoulder. It's hard to get the shoulder blades together. That's why it feels kind of weird. But if you reverse lace, you reverse engineer, you try something new that might just work for you, that will externally rotate your shoulders, which is what brings the shoulder blades together, people. <laughs> then you really get your shoulder blades together, which does what? Takes the pressure off your neck, bone, joint, nerves. Smart cookie, good for you. Release your hands, release onto your back. Bring your knees towards your shoulders, not towards your chest bone. Excuse my 
the, this view, but get your knees towards your shoulders so that the, the hips can release and the tailbone can drop down. Don't pull your knees together. That will round your back. Flatten your tail by opening your knees as wide as your shoulders. Good. Then reach inside and do both. Outer feet catching and pull your knees towards the floor. As you do that, try to, as you pull your knees towards the floor, try to push your sacrum down to the floor. At the same time, feel that release your hips and lumbar. Oh, juicy. Oh. You want to try to pull your feet back towards your floor of your head. That's also welcome. Now, if you do that, you're probably balancing on your widespread shoulder blades, which gives you the ability to rock from side to side and feel the floor massage on the ribs and muscles between the spine and the shoulder blades on both sides. Good job. Nice. Which is a real point of tension that one kind of area it's hard to reach with your when you try to scratch your middle spine. That's the thoracic most stable, most tension holding part um, of the back. Even though we feel it in our neck and our lower back, most of the tension is in the middle thoracic rib cage area. Wonderful. Then that you come up, you still got this going when you come up, right? And then you say, hey, whoa, can I? Ooh. Or can I just do one side? One side's good. Check my neck, check my shoulder. Let me try the other side. Take the, oh, what's going on in my neck? When I have an extended shoulder joint, I can get into my shoulder blade. Okay, good. And then eventually you can try both legs and get a lot of shoulder action whenever you feel beautiful then you can um well you can take a break excuse me come down get your shoulder a little bit more behind your arm cross up make sure we get both sides i'll do both sides right now just think we did one side to be fair so get one shoulder up Press up a little bit after if you want. Once you get one press, you can just keep that leg up by the shoulder or whatever you're into. And then try to put the hands down. Lift the pelvis backwards a little bit so that you stay center. You're trying to pull the hips back a little bit. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Let's hug in, chill for a minute. Same leg before we go right to the other side. But real quick, I'm gonna suggest we just flex the ankle past the knee over the thigh, just like we're crossing our legs and pull in, get into the deep seat. Like your ankle a little bit good. Then rock that spine and pull into your chest. Come up. Rock that spine, pull into your chest. Oof. Come up. Get a little more core. Try to rock up. That's okay. And then go back in. Rock up. A little more core. You know. And go back in. It's too much information in a short one hour flow. But I'll just say real quick, if your outer knee, crucian ligament, uh, interior knee joint is, feels pain, you need to back off. So what you, the safe thing to do is get off of the shin, go onto the hamstring, why? Because it gives you more arm, more strike on your inner thigh. So that when you, if you hold your, there's a lot of things, gives you the free kick, but then you push your thigh out. And do flex your ankle, that's a real thing. Stabilize your knee with, from your ankle. And then push your thigh out to open the hip, de unrotate the knee, decompress the outer knee tissue. 
Then when you pull in, you're like, oh my God, that's so much more hip and so much less knee at the source tension in the hip, which allows the knee to release and get more outer IT band stretch. Good for you. Remember, when you pull in your knee into your chest, before you let go, try to push your sacrum to the floor at the same time. Oh, mama. Then if you're crazy, and you are, you know, you know who you are, then you're gonna take that free leg and drop to the side and take an ekapara virasana. So you're gonna one-legged hero that foot folded under you and then just sit, you know, get that long thigh up into your core. You get, are you with me? Should I do it again? You're here, you're going, ooh, ooh, ooh. So good, oh baby. Then you drop to the side of your cross leg thigh so that you can fold your leg back and take that. You're already crossing the foot, so it, it, it helps to weight down your thigh. Oh, feel, stay with it. Breathe through the strong thigh and see if you can carry on into the feeling that, uh, in the core sheath above the pelvis on the same stretch side the thigh. Feel that relationship between the long A-frame of the six points on the lower lumbar uh, psoas that connect to the iliacus and on down through the, on the head of the thigh down, and then down through the thigh to the knee. Oh! Then you get out of there by any means necessary. Oh. Who's going to remember that sequence? Not me. Oh boy. They stretch the hamstring. Luckily, Arno Sensei took notes. <laughs> He's going to teach us the other side. Thank God there's a real teacher in the house. Hallelujah. All right, brother. Take it from here. <laughs> what? Oh. Somebody's jumping, my side sense is jumping back in for some reason. Good. I have some giant beetles trying to stare me down like a Mexican standoff. Dude, you win. So we go back, we go to the second side. Ooh. Right. Okay. Let's stretch out again. All right, stalling for time. I kind of blanked on a long sequence. I'm gonna go back to this base and hold this for a moment, see if it comes to me. Oh. Good thing this is recording. I'm gonna rock the spine again, get back into it. I can't remember everything I did, but I do remember when we got into the cross-legged part, um, but I'm gonna try to have us come up into like a core because earlier we were working like this, working like this, we were preparing the body, preparing the body. And then we had some kind of an arm log, but then finally the part that I'm skipping apart, but, um, we got to this part. This was kind of the gist of the, the flow. Then we reach through and hold the shin and pull the chest towards the, the towards the, the foot. What we did earlier is that we pulled the knee towards the floor. We're trying to press the sacrum down. But now we're crossing the leg, pulling the shin in, and we start to rock the spine back and go deep into the piriformis deep seat. But then when we rock up, we try to reactivate the core. If you can, we started with that Navasana. We lifted the chest, try to balance on the sit bone. And then we go back in. Remember, this is the first time, let me do my second side. The thing that I wanted to emphasize today that I thought was important was how to protect the knee and open the hip, right? So I'm gonna show you that now again. So as we pull the chest into the thigh and we pull back into the floor, 
We rock up and try to activate the core, lift the chest. Earlier, I said, it's okay to put the foot down and get on your sit bones. We talked about how the, in a forward bend, the sit bones go back, you fold from the hips. In a back bend, the sacrum comes forward and you extend the spine. But in, the, in both poses, in the Vasana, it's both, right? You're on the sit bones. You're trying to fold forward from the hips, but you're also lifting your chest to get onto the sit bones. So it's like a back bend, forward bend with a core balance. All right, so we'll do that one more time. We'll go back and pull in deep, but then you might start to feel your outer knee of your crossed legs. You flex your ankle more to activate the shin to stabilize the knee, but then you're like, oh, as you pull into your chest, you press your sacrum down. It's a great stretch, but I feel my outer knee. So then if that's true, I'll say, come up. Reactivate your core one more time, please. But then, you know, let go of your shin to hold the back of your thigh. Extend your leg a little bit, right? Like that. Now, one of the reasons, one of the many benefits to interlacing the back of the thigh is that it gets the more arm option to, to press out. So we're holding the back thigh, it can push more of my own thigh out to unrotate the knee, decompress the outer knee joint, <laughs> excuse me, tissue, and go to the deep source tension in the hip. So interlace the back thigh of, of this extended leg, right? With the extended leg. And then we'll press the thigh out. Make sure to flex your ankle of your cross leg. That's a big deal, important. And then you push the thigh, you can recline. You push the thigh out. You pull the knee towards the chest. And all the while flexing both ankles, self-breathing. And before you finish that deep stretch in your seat, try to press your sacrum to the floor as you pull your knee to your and foot to your chest. And be in that for a breath. Then I'm just gonna kind of fall to the side of the cross-legged thigh, right? I'm just gonna fall over to, the, yes, exactly. Thank you, Arno. Please teach us, brother. Teach us, brother. You go on and teach, brother. Teach the people. And you take that foot and you fold it. You take the straight leg foot and you fold it like a Virasana, that it is. Keeping the cross leg foot over the thigh above the knee. If you can pull that off, you've locked yourself into a very deep pose. I hope you like it. Oof. Let's breathe through that. See if you can let that long thigh move up, feeling move up, slow down the breath. Deepen the feeling, increase the release. And the cross-legged foot, knee sinks towards the floor, kind of relaxes your hips and back and it activates the core of the folded hero leg side. Feel that yummy deep stretch right above your front hip pelvis. The anterior superior iliac spine, the little ASIS, little hip bump. Right above that, your psoas coming off the inner head of your thigh bone, moving up uh, from your from your pelvis to your diaphragm and ribs, and up to the front lumbar spine. It's pulling. That's good things. Then get on out of there. Slowly release everything, please. And I'm gonna finish up today with the actual golden lotus set, which if you're a teacher or some or a, or a practitioner that wants to open their hips and protect their knees, this is good. I hope, I hope that it helps you. So here we go, here are the steps. Some of us have done this a lot of times. I've done it more times and I can't get enough of it. I just love it. And I hope you like it. That's how I'm gonna spend it the final 10 minutes of the second hour. Are you okay with that, everybody? We're certainly prepped for it, boy. We are prepped for it. So we go back to the basics, arm lock, hasta bada pada, hand binds foot or leg, right? 
right? And then we interlace the foot, yes. And the alignment factor is to try to get the ankle flexed and the ankle on the knee line and the knee on the hip line, which means like a staircase, 90 degrees. And then you're gonna try to pull the knee to the floor. We did this earlier. If that's a little tight, you go ahead and bend the free knee to the chest. Flex the ankle again, knee over, ankle over knee, knee to the floor, and extend to your personal limit. For five, four, three, two, one. Saved by the bell. To your corners. Here we go. Rock that spine. Give me five. Exhale back. Inhale forward. One. Two. Three. We're balancing core and deep hip release. Finding the relationship between the pelvis and the core that connects the leg and the spine, right? Pelvic core. Abdominal uh, core muscular structure. All right. Pull it back. Draw your shore. Show the glint of the steel in the sun. Don't don't take your sword out of the sheath. Just show a little steel. Just enough to let them know what time it is. Time to not die. All right. Good for you. And release that and try the other side. I didn't do that. I forgot to do that part, but on the second side. Oh, if you want to play catch up. I, I forgot to do this on the second side, which is a quickie, but just pull it in. Um, I think that's what prompted me to try to show how to protect the knee. But you could really feel this in the outer knee now that you have rotated your knee under deep pressure on the, on the outer thigh. Mm. Be careful there. Neil saw. All right, now we do the second side. There's only three or four parts to this. It's easy to remember, easy to do. Open the hips without pressure in the knee. So second side, here we go. Lace and pull. Five. Four, three, two, your deepest breath, one, give me five rocks, try to come up if you can, if it's too much, don't come all the way up, it's okay, two, one, Little plow, little boat. Two. Ooh. Oh. Three. Oh. Where's my sit bones? Four. Good, everybody. Five. Okay, good. Drop that free leg, pull back, activate long, strong thigh, deep hip. And draw. Show your strength. Hold on, let go down. Then the next one is to come to the opposite side again and do like a muddy cha. Just do like a muddy cha. Stretching over that straight leg with an arm log squat. Yeah. Bound arm side squat, side lower back. Might feel something, I, I don't know. Then you take, let go, but keep your arm there. Hug the leg in and interlace the fingers. Try to get comfortable. I know it's a lot of nerves under the arm, trust me. You have a tattoo under your arm. You know how many nerves are there? The most painful area in the body. Surprise! Wasn't this the bleeding heart? 
So I know it's a lot of nerves. So interlace there, pull it back. The hip is compressed, clearly. You're pulling the leg out, you're compressing the hip. More deep massage, go in, Ooh, pull back, pull back. Resist, pull back, oof, oof. Keep squeezing the thigh, feel strong bits, heavy base. Ooh. Then recline back for five. Oh. Three. One, let's come up for five. Five, oh, didn't make it myself the first time. Two, I fell. You guys are doing better than me. Three, oh boy. Two, ooh. One, oops. Okay, I nailed it. Then you let it go. What's going on? Anything? Something going on in there? The technique is that we are not rotating the knee. The technique is that we are completely flexing the hip with a neutrally flexed knee, putting all the pressure on the hip and letting the knee relax so that all the attention goes to the hip. The effect is accessing lotus from the dominant hip activation, which is unusual because people usually twist into it first, which targets the awareness in the knee. The body responds that way. In any case, the second side, we take a mani chan, come around, we clasp the fingers. Okay. Every machine in Japan has a timer safety sensor on it with a beeper. Because old people always fall asleep. <laughs> Everything is safe here. Okay, it's been an hour. So now we're in it, we're doing it. Whatever we're doing. This is good for an old guy like me. And then when you let go, you interlace your fingers. I know it's getting close to the hour, so we'll go right into it. Be careful with your nerves. It helps to reset a little bit. Really pull that shin into your rib, compress the hip. Pull back, activate the straight thigh, lean back, kind of to the side and back. You might feel a little bit of waist, a little bit of lower back, kind of a deep, achy waist. That's your colon. That's that digest, detox, and digest. That's wonderful. Then we take it back for five, four. Or that's your, perhaps your kidney or your liver if you're on the right side. I don't know what side you're on, but you're just, we're just detoxing. That's the good news. Breathe through it. Two. One. We'll rock it and try to nail it. One. Inhale. Oh, didn't make it. Exhale back. Inhale up. Ooh. Two. Good job, guys. Three. Oh. Yes. Two. Good. Okay. One. Let it go. See what's going on. Just check in with that hip. Knee feels pretty chill. The hip's pretty active. I'm getting it in my lower back. And next one, this could be the last one. It's nine o'clock, but yeah, you know, I have time if you have time, but the next one is the same. I'm going to the opposite side, alternate side. The next one is the same thing like Maricha, only this time we put the back, if you can. If you can't do the current one, you do the previous one, okay? It has steps. You choose your pleasure. And then the back of the hand goes to the bottom of the foot. So instead of interlacing, now the back of the hand and the arm lock side is catching the back of the foot. Clear, clear. Okay, good. Then that is that, right? Then you just 45, 45, you, you champion movement, like, yay, champion. It's also martial arts for pa. So then the, you catch that, 
jewelry clasp, if you like, or champion, and you pull it back. Backs of the hands into the bottom of the foot. Ah, you want to probably be in the arch right next to the heel. It's much more comfortable on the nerves on the back of the wrist. I just, it's like a puzzle. I just tell you, don't go up, go down. Find a little arch. All right, you're my champ here. Then pull it in. And again, get a better hook. And you get more comfortable also on the wrist. And pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back, squeeze, 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 pull back, pull back, oof, oof. And try to now try to pull the leg back. Oof. Try to pull the leg back. Oof. And then take it down for five, please. Five. It's hurting my wrist today for some reason. If it hurts your wrist too much, like me, then move more onto the back of your hand than your wrist. It'll be more comfortable. I'm just noticing. Okay. Two, three, two, one. Rock up for five. Oh, okay, rock up for three. Three. Two. One. Beautiful. And let it go. Let it go, make sure your wrist and shoulder are okay. Feel how light your leg is becoming or how whatever's happening. We try the other side, please. We arm lock, arm bar again. And this time, instead of the palms, it's the back of the hand, clear. Palm slaps, palm clasp. Get, a, get comfortable, pull, squeeze, pull. Five, four, three, it's just deep flexed hip and knee. There's no rotation on the knee. That's the idea here. Ooh, it's all hip. Hip target. Target joint is the hip. And then we recline for three. Two. You can adjust how deep you can take it in the outer knee, the outer thigh band towards the hip as you move the ankle over the knee, but don't care. It's okay to flex more, safer. Good job. Come up for three when you're ready. Three. Two. Oh. One. And then let it go. Check it, make sure you're good. Feel what's going on. And uh, I'm gonna offer one more. There's a there's very deep advanced ones. If, later it's Yogi Danda. It's not, it's a little after that. Yogi Danda is really, I can't do it right now, but it's really deep kind of. And then you go from hip to deep core and very deep lower back. I, we'll just do one more. This is fun. Uh, you might not be able to do it, but from this one, that I go, you do, all you do, if you can get the back of the head, is you go for inner elbow. Boom. Inner elbow. All you do is go just as far as you can towards the elbow. That's all. It's a lot deeper. It's actually more comfortable because you got a good muscly hook on the inner bicep tendon. It's, there's a lot of tension there. So this, from the back of the hand to the inner elbow, Oh boy, what a massage. It's so nice just to pull it in. Oh, you massage yourself with your outer uh, tarsals, the outer foot bones. Oh, what a nice massage that is. How much tension do you realize you we hold by holding babies or things? You know, all that tension's right in there. Oh, that's a wonderful acupressure point, right? So then we pull. And we pull back and resist the fall. We keep squeezing the thigh. We pull back. Ooh. This is moving from hip into the deep waist, lower back, core. I don't know if you can hopefully feel that. Ooh, 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 ooh. We're going back. We're going to lie down. We're taking it as far as we can. Try to hold your ground. Oh, oh. both knees. At first, sorry, that was a late suggestion to protect your outer bound knee, and then ease in. Actually, all of the variations are that way. 
knee to the chest, and then ease in to the pose. Thank you. Five, four, three. Two. Oh. One. Namaste. Come on up. Try to hold it for five. Holding up. Holding up when you're ready. Five, four, three, two, chest up. Where's my sit bones direction? One. And let it go. Well, no, don't let it go. Sorry. We're finishing here. So then just keep that mudra and let that pull the heel into the navel. Just let it happen. Let it be natural. And then let the foot kind of ease off the arm and the top of the foot just kind of hooks on the thigh. Hooks on the thigh. And the full expression even of uh, Ardha Padmas, half lotus is you flex the ankle around the outer thigh, you squeeze the thigh, and then the, the, you know, the, the knee comes into the outer knee limit from the outer band tension, and you try to access the deep hip. So the idea is that that's how you jump through and jump back, but you got to lock your lotus, right? Or go into deep places, deep lifts, right? So go ahead and flex your ankle. Another time we could talk about the internal healing aspects, like when you, when you bind your foot, or if you can't bind your foot, then you hold your own foot and bind your arm, walk to the wrist, use a towel or partner or whatever you're doing, you know. And then that will massage your kidney in the back, especially when you flex the ankle, it'll pull your wrist into your kidney, if you understand me. And it will also dig your heel into your psoas, your, your iliac, your core muscle. It does a lot of things. It's just a smart thing. Oh, but that's a whole nother program. But I just say that. So you focusing on the internal, I don't know, punch the economy, the, the Kriya is the internal purifying actions Ooh. for another time or times to come. Let's finish with this last side, please. Make sure that you don't, if you're advanced, you jump out of Lotus and the it on and all that stuff. And if you're lucky, you survive Ashtanga and old school Iyengar and all the really strong yoga and you don't get hurt. But, you know, it's better probably to bring the knee, unrotate the knee first, check in. And then slowly squeeze all the leg muscles to extend. And then the, the joint tissue will just be loving you, loving on you for that, as you know. Then we did this last side, last variation for today. And do the arm lock. Um, and do whatever you want to do. A little, little heat or whatever. And then we back to the hand. Did we do the back of the hand? Oh, oh, we didn't, right? We went straight from back of the hand to inner elbow on one side because it connected. So let's go back of the hand on the second side. I can't remember if we did both sides. Do you know? You don't remember? Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. Let's go from the yes. back. Yes, we did both wrists. Fine. Then we hook the elbow around the foot. Oh, boy, I'm not a very good teacher, but. As a technician, I hope that you can use this as a good teacher yourself. Uh, as, a, as a formidable technician, I think that's something I can share with you. So we're pulling it back. It's the same champion mudra, double 45, just you know, clasp, very stable, and pulling back, squeezing thigh, oof, 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 oof. as far as you can, go all in. Go big or go om. Here we go. Ooh. For most of us, this is a pretty deep place. So please take it easy. We're going to come up and try to balance now. Oi. Yo, so. Five, four, 
Feel your core. Whoops. I lost my attention. Feel your core. Three, two, one. Let it up. Don't let it go. Just let, just pull the heel right in towards the navel. Or, and if you're, if you know old school yoga, you touch your forehead with your foot to make sure your knee can handle your hip. And then the, so much significance there. And the heel comes into the navel. The foot hooks around the thigh, which closes the, compresses the hip to massage it, decompress it in a way. Um, and you squeeze the, the straight thigh. And if you're wanting to feel the kidney and the core, feel the connection between the filter and the stabilizer, you know, it's such a beautiful relationship or whatever you got going. And you flex the ankle, the forearm pulls into the filter and then the heel digs into the stabilizer. Oh, there you got it all, baby. You lean into it. That's a yoga mudra right there, right? And then, of course, whatever your body likes to do, finally you can do it. Feel the effect of your lotus as you draw your seat bones back. Seat bones back and seat bones together. Excuse me, seat bones back and together. Seat bones back and together. And finally back, back together. Yes, and feel that base. And breathe that grace in the form of formlessness or the energy that we feel traveling through the breath. The tongue is high and the pelvis knows why. With regular practice, the great yogis say, lift the tongue to the roof and the pelvic floor will follow. To make Maha Bandha. Or the great house. So the breath that we breathe in our body is much like tending the fire of the temple. The 
We are the fire keepers and the sky walkers. The Dakini sky dancers that protect us on our resonant journey. A whole Namaste. Thank you very much. I enjoyed that very much. I know everyone has things to do and people to take care of, but um, do you have anything you want to share? Or you can unmute yourself and share, or you can chat me anytime. You have any technical or philosophical or even life questions? I won't have any answers there, but uh, I have lived the life of 10 people, apparently. So I might even have some advice, or you might have some for me. But I'm here. Point is, we could chat about anything you like. You're totally available. That's the sensei's job, as you know, sensei. Building community, being a guardian, and a protector as yogi warrior healers. I'm going to sign off and say thank you very much. Right after I take a screenshot, everybody smile for the camera. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, that was gorgeous. Have a beautiful time. I hope to see you soon. Ciao.